just gonna show you guys what the inside of the spray can looks like. This is part two of painted the Rambler. Um, just finished painting it and that's what it looks like. Now note carefully the sides, they're full of paint. Uh, now you'll see what will happen. Actually it's already starting to happen. It's actually, the paint is actually starting to drip towards the bottom. And uh, let me set this aside and I'll talk about this. Start talking now. Um. Using a hat because the uh, spray, the paint sometimes gets in your hair. It's a bit of a pain in the ass. Oh, okay. Over. Yeah, I figured this is more than enough. Okay. Now, let's start with. Well, let's start with actually the one I just showed you guys. The, uh, the fucking um, paint can. Now, what happens is. You, most important thing in painting, and there is one thing that's most important than anything else, it's the viscosity of the paint. And I've actually seen people on YouTube, they painted a car, it's actually a nice car like a cool car, I think it was a Mustang, or, I don't know, but they actually painted it with a uh, Roller, you know, the cotton roller, like for painting walls and such. They actually use that, and the finish is actually pretty nice. Now, why is the viscosity more the most important thing? Because if you leave it too viscous, the paint is too thick, you know, like like pasty. Um, if it's like like honey, sort of like honey consistency, uh, what will happen is it won't like spread out evenly. And if you're spraying it, or if you're roller coating it, if you're applying paint with a roller, what will happen is you'll get famous orange peel. Okay? Uh, so it doesn't matter the size of the nozzle you have, it doesn't matter the paint gun you have, um, it doesn't matter anything else, everything else. It doesn't matter. Because whatever you're shooting in there, paint is getting on the body of the car instead of it's flattening out it's staying in the droplets okay so that's the most important thing in my case um, and the reason I was showing you guys the, uh, the spray can is because when the viscosity is right you want the paint to be like not so much like water not to the point where it's like water because it's too uh, that's way too thin, which is not too bad. Okay, it's better. It's it's much better dealing with paint that's too thin, and you get runs rather than having to deal with orange peel. The only way you pretty much that you can remove orange peel is to either you put another coat to fix it, or you just sand it. So it's a pain in the ass. Now sanding runs is not a big deal because the whole paint, the entire paint. Our car is actually nice and flat, nice and smooth, and you get drips in certain places. But the the, uh, the runs, they're actually smooth. You can see that they're really, really, actually really smooth. Okay? And so, but if you have orange peel, and you have like, sometimes like really serious, you, know, you get to the point where you have, uh, well, it's not even an orange peel, it's like a uh, pineapple peel. <laughs> It's just uh, a pain in the ass, okay? So, that being said, let me actually show you guys the uh, viscosity. The actual viscosity that I use, and the correct viscosity, it's more like milk sort of thing. Maybe like a really thick juice. Let's say uh, guava juice. Maybe a little bit thinner. Um, anything else? Yeah, not like water. Water is too thin. Um, you still can get away with it because uh, if you're using paint that's too thin, that's like watery. It's like real water. 
All you have to do is turn the, uh, the amount of paint down. You just have to apply more coats. We'll get into that in a second. But the way you can tell the correct viscosity is you can actually look at it. You can actually get like a transparent uh, container like this. And you'll see that the, the, uh, it's actually transparent again. The paint has um, it's gone down all the way to the bottom. Like I shake it like that, now the whole thing is white. But you can actually see the paint flowing uh, down to the bottom. And uh, in a few, well, maybe not a few minutes, but maybe in a half an hour or so, this is going to be nice and clean once again, you're going to be able to see through it. Now, the same test you can use on the uh, painting gun. Uh, I'll show you guys. I'll show you guys the paint gun. I mean the paint gun. Right here, the paint gun. <laughs> Stop fooling around. All right. Okay, now it's it's been what six minutes. Uh, hopefully, you can already tell the difference. It's already quite a bit cleaner, but eventually, the whole like, the can, the size of the can, will not have any more paint. That's because now if the paint was too thick, like like sort of like uh, thick oil, then it would actually stick to the sides. This wouldn't happen. So let me put this back. So that being said, you know, with the nice thin paint, correct, uh, correctly uh, thin paint, you can actually get. A uh, nice flat, smooth surface. Uh, re even if you're using a uh, roller, even a paintbrush. Okay, that's not too bad. This is a. You don't see any reflection yet because this is a more of a uh, made finish paint. It's not very glossy. There's a little bit of some runs over there. It will be easily sanded off, as you'll see later. But the most important thing is getting paint in little crevices, like around here. Water will stop and it will start to rust and the rust will like run down the side and you don't want that. You rather, I'd rather spend a little more time sanding it rather than, you know, having to repaint it and, you know, reprotect everything. Uh, the disadvantage of being outside, painting outside, is that the uh, little bugs and little leaves and shit will fall in the paint, but like I said, it's really not a big deal. Uh, if you don't believe me, you can easily check some uh, bigger, there's some really big companies that, I think it's Eastwood or whatever, Flatwood, whatever, that actually uh, show you guys the painting outside. Um, as you can see the uh, runs there, I pretty much eliminated it by applying more coats. Uh, but not at once, Just waiting a few minutes, maybe 10-20 minutes so that it sort of dries. It'll sort of dry enough in, in that time, enough to put another coat of paint. If you just try to put it all at once then you'll get the runs. But if you get the run, just wait, like I said, wait 20 minutes, reapply another coat of paint and it, you know, evens it out. fairly shiny as you can see so and guys this is before buffing before sanding before clear coat okay so hopefully you can tell that there let's see I'll put my hand here oops you can actually see the reflection there nice reflection so Here I dumped a lot of paint because there was a crack starting to develop there. Let's see a bit of a crack. It's going to require some more sanding. A little bit of a run here. You know, just more sanding, just a little bit more sanding. But really, this only takes a few seconds of sanding with the. Uh, uh, by hand, it will take a little bit longer, maybe two minutes. 
with the uh, an orbital sander or a, a jitterbug sander or a palm sander it's, it's sometimes you interchange the names it really only takes a few seconds uh, there we go. I'll show you guys around where there was a run here you can sort of still see it there I don't know if you can see it or not right here is a little bit of run there's a little bit of run there and uh, there you go. those are the holes for the trim a few more bugs on the hood hood is actually a little bit dull maybe it'll need a little bit more sanding later It's more of a patch and it's not really flat to finish yet. Uh, you could leave it like this, but I'm going to go ahead and put the clear coat. Um, not yet, obviously, because it's still too wet. Uh, I'm bring the camera over here. Okay. See, I removed all the trim, pretty much all of the uh, big trim. The only trim that's left is the uh, little narrow side trim that go over the side. Okay, so returning to talking about the paint, uh, I just wanted to show you guys around so that you guys can see it's a good paint job. And um, like I said, the other main thing is focusing on the edges and corner. That's where, where it's you always get like not enough paint. You always see it starts to crack around uh, people's cars, not on mine. Right there, there's a little bit of crack there. You can see where there was a little bit of a crack there. Right there, you see that? Right. Okay, so it's that there. Um, talked about viscosity okay now the the air gun itself I'll just bring it over to show you I can't give you specific numbers on viscosity uh, like how much you mix with the thinner okay there's paint thinner so when you buy a can of paint a lot of times it'll uh, It'll come pretty thick, depending on the paint you have. You gotta dilute it, you gotta thin it. Um, I can't give you a specific number like for every paint, because every paint is different viscosity, right? But I'll give you a, the exact name of the paint I'm using. Uh, it's a really, really common paint in North America. Okay? Um, but before we get into that, let's just assume you got the right viscosity. I'll talk about the paint gun itself. Uh, this is a W77 paint gun from eBay, from China. Okay, most of them are from China, anyways. And I bought it for I think it was 15 or 20 dollars Canadian. So, uh, or was it in U.S. dollars? Can't remember. But it was around that price range there, 10 to 20 bucks. I try to buy this at the store, it's literally like $100 or something like that. I've used this paint, I've had, I've had this paint gun for a few years now. It works fine, it's pretty heavy duty. It's got stainless steel parts. The paint gun itself is not stainless steel, it's some sort of aluminum. But it is really good. Uh, here's a paint gun uh, can, and you can move it up and down like this. So let's say you're painting, you want to paint like flat down. If you do this, the paint will drip off, right? Uh, so you can actually go like this, that it's nice and flat. If you want to paint up, you move it up like that, okay? Pretty straightforward. You can actually remove it through here. Now the nozzle, you can turn it side to side to change the angle of the spray. The spray itself isn't round, it's, it's flat, right? A rectangular sort of thing so you change this around and move it around like that okay uh, this top nozzle here in this case 
it adjusts the uh, width of the spray. So once again, this has got nothing to do with the air, uh, paint, mixture, radio, nothing. It's just the, uh, the width. If you actually close this all the way down, the paint will actually be concentrated in this little spot, and which is really good if you're painting like really small things or corners and edges. And the, uh, the, the, uh, actually, it'll actually be round, right? The paint that comes out will actually come like a little spot. It'll be concentrated in one spot, whereas if you open it like all the way, it'll just go everywhere, right? So you don't want it going everywhere because then it's just paint is just going into the air. You don't want it in like a tiny spot, right? It's, it's going to take forever to paint the car and you're just going to get runs. So you want it like, I don't know, somewhere in between. You just got to play around with it and test it. Um, and then here, here's probably the uh, most important button here, and you turn it you, by closing it, you know, turning it clockwise, you close it, and less paint comes out. So this controls the, the ratio of air and paint. If you have too much paint, you're just going to get run. You're going to get run right away, right? To start dripping all over the place. That's a good position. Uh, if you have it uh, too far, they're too far, far in. You're not going to get enough paint, and pretty much the little amount of paint you're going to get is just going to fly everywhere because it's pretty much, you know, there's t just pretty much air really, like it's too light of a spray. The air is just going to, it's just going to get into the air, or maybe it'll just get like droplets of paint on the car. So you, like I said, you just got to play around with it. Um, uh, and all, this also depends on the velocity that you're moving along, right? Uh, if, if, like I'm usually in a hurry, so I actually leave, I like to leave a little bit more paint coming out, but I just go faster. Now, if you're stuck in one spot like this and you're going slowly, and maybe you're going to get too much paint, so it also depends on that, right? Um, and then down here, you got the pressure adjustment. And this is going to tell you how much pressure. This is just going to regulate how much air is going to come into the paint gun. It's not going to change the air to, to paint mixture. It's just going to change how fast the paint is coming out. Okay, And if you have it too fast, the paint is just going to fly all over the place. If you have it too, too, um, too little pressure, you're just going to get like a little spray mist, like little droplets of paint, right? So once again, you got to paint, you got to play around with that. Uh, how do you adjust it usually? How do you set up the gun? Usually just halfway in between and you can tell uh, things by uh, it's pretty pretty straightforward. So let's say for example when I first started painting uh, first of all I had the wrong viscosity. I just try to I, because first of all, oh yes, one more thing. There's a nozzle size here. W77 is pretty much the biggest nozzle available on uh, on eBay. I think it's 2.5 millimeters, and they have some of the uh, smaller guns. They're actually smaller. Uh, I think it's a W71 or whatever, and it's got like 1.5 millimeter nozzle. Okay, and now the problem with that is I actually broke a few of them to bits because I got so mad and frustrated because I would put the paint in, nothing would come out, just air what the fuck now the reason being the reason for that is the paint was actually too thick so with this with bigger nozzles you're actually able to spray paint uh, thicker paints okay um, as far as viscosity is concerned it doesn't matter so this to me is just a more versatile gun okay um, we have 10 more minutes your time in a second <laughs> okay so there's the nozzles there I wouldn't go with the uh, little W71s they're just too tiny I believe there's still a bigger bigger uh, nozzle but this is pretty much as big as it goes um, so the problem being when I first started is I just put the paint inside without thinning it or not thinning it enough and I just get like really bad orange peel. It's like sandpaper, you know, terrible, terrible. And I was thinking, oh, well, what the fuck? And just played around with the adjustments and nothing. The 
first thin guns, the smaller guns, I broke them because the paint wasn't coming out. Um, because the nozzle was too small. Now for here, so as I was saying, um, what else can I just talk about? Let's set it up first. I mean, you just spray paint, maybe even in a car. You know, people sometimes they have like a cardboard or a place where they test the gun. I just test it on the car, anyways, because it's gonna be painted, anyways, right? So, I mean, but that's up to you, obviously. And um, first thing I'd start off with is the. Uh, I don't know, maybe the, uh, yeah, definitely make sure, I start off with the, uh, the size of the, uh, of the spray pattern, okay, it's called spray pattern. I just turned it maybe up to half, to make sure the paint is spreading out, like, not in one single spot, right? First that, and then, you know, if the spray paints are like little droplets, you can, you can, you need to listen to it. Is, is it too much air coming out? Is there enough air? And uh, if you have too much air, like I said, it's just going to blow all over the place. And so just go to the air adjustment here, or you can actually adjust it through here. And after that, I, I check. If you're having orange peel, it's definitely this here, or the viscosity of the paint, okay? Uh, you can actually get have the correct viscosity. You won't really get any orange peel, because regardless, you spray a lot of paint in one spot or too little it's gonna spread out evenly okay so you can't really change orange peel with the gun I know there's people that say you can or whatever but you can't okay the orange peel gets corrected uh, on the paint directly not on the paint gun so what this here does you're just gonna adjust your this here uh, by your, your velocity and how fast you want to go if you want to go really fast you can actually Unscrew it so that the uh, bolt here screws like sticking out more. And if you want it to go thinner, if you have a really thin paint, you can actually do various coats. Okay, and that's usually preferable. I just prefer to leave it a little bit thick and you actually get a little bit of orange peel. And then I just give it a quick sand. And, anyways, a little bit of orange peel, the uh, clear coat corrects it. Okay. Clear cone actually smooths it out, sort of thing. Um, you actually can't tell the difference. You can't see the uh, orange peel anymore. So, a little bit of orange peel and a little less time for me is good. But if you really want to, you can make the paint really thin and then just do various, many thin coats. Okay. Okay, so I think we're done here. Now, there are some good videos out there, but. It's kind of hard to find, but there I've seen a guy. Um, he wasn't painting a car; he was painting a, like a spray paint shop for um, I think it was furniture. I'm not quite sure, but he was he actually talked a long time about this in lots of detail. And uh, yeah, so you can check there. Uh, let's just check the can here. Okay, the paint is not all the way to the bottom yet. Um, I got myself a beer come right back. talk about is paint itself when I first started painting cars I went over to the uh, like a car place 
it had tiny little cans like a quart it was like maybe half a liter half a liter and they were like thirty dollars each they were actually lacquer based paints okay and they came ready to use I didn't know of any other paints so that's what I bought and I spent a lot of money because painting a car those little cans they just they just go man you can maybe paint one fender with one of those cans so the finish wasn't really nice um, uh, with the lacquer based paint that's what it was I think yeah lacquer based or uh, yeah lacquer based paint it's actually really really thin paint it's like water and it's really expensive so that's definitely what I never used again I regret it terribly using that paint so um, walking over and doing some research went to a place called Home Depot Auto Parts which is just Home Depot and you get you have there you have metal paint paint for steel and you're thinking and I'm thinking like what the fuck guys okay one paint and even at the car place they had that paint as well steel paint and car paint and I'm thinking well cars are made of steel what the fuck? You gotta be fucking kidding me. What the hell is this? And the uh, steel paint was like 10 times cheaper. And I'm like, what the fuck? I mean, cars are made of steel. Why would you have paint for cars that isn't for steel? And the, uh, the paint for steel that isn't for cars. That just this doesn't make sense. So I did some research, and yeah, a lot of people just use that paint. It's just sons of bitches, manufacturers, and people that are trying to rip you off guys I've seen people there on YouTube there's people painting Mustangs or vets with just regular base paint it's like $30 paint job like that's unbelievable I, I, I actually spent like $300 for a shitty paint job we, I, with like only one or two coats of paint it's ridiculous and the paint was that lacquer paint is so thin that you can actually see through it. It's just garbage. I don't know. What the, I don't think they even use it anymore. I don't, I don't know what the fuck they have that for. So for the paint, there's actually three uh, three big names that I find, which is Tremclad, uh, Rust Check. And the one that I'm using is Armor Coat. And these paints, they're all for steel. And I'll show you guys. Okay. You got a huge 3.78 liter can of paint for pretty much for the same price. For actually a little bit more expensive. And this paint is really thick. So I actually had to use 50% about, uh, thin it to 50%, uh, actually pretty much like one to one. So I'm actually getting twice this amount of paint. Plus it's still a, a, a decently thick paint even so. So really I'm getting three times, I already have, if just the can itself is already three times like, let's say that can was one liter, I think it was one liter. So the paint itself is already three times, you already get three times more paint. Plus you gotta thin it, you get twice more paint still because you gotta thin it. So you're actually getting like six times more paint and the paint is nicer to deal with, thicker even so. So you're actually getting ten times, fucking ten times more paint than you'd get from like a, uh, like a, a paint store. Uh, car paint place, you know. It's better that I'm using Armor Coat, and it's actually pretty durable. It's and it's actually especially for uh, rust paint. So a lot of cars you can even just like apply it on top of the uh, like light rust. Right? You don't need primer for this. It's just you know. You're really saving a lot.